Our new six push to drive change in the state's texting and driving laws has hit a roadblock in Tallahassee. While the bill is still expected to go to the full House floor tomorrow, one state senator, Rob Bradley, refused to let his colleagues vote on the issue today, killing the bill's chance in the Senate. Anchor Matt Austin has made it a personal cause since he was hit by a distracted driver in 2016. And Matt was in Tallahassee yesterday trying to press Senator Bradley for answers. Representative Emily Sloshberg says the Senate is the only branch of Florida gov government refusing to make this life-saving legislation a priority. And so we have the support of the Speaker of the House. We have the support of Governor Rick Scott. But we don't have the support of Senator Rob Bradley. The Senate needs to get its, get its priorities together. I have not seen safety as a priority of the state Senate. I have not seen it. And it needs to, it needs to start now. Now, Senate President Joe Negron has the power to pull the bill out of committee and put it up for a floor vote. But his staff told Matt yesterday he's just going to let the bill die. Instead, mm. uh, we, of course, will keep trying. Yeah, this is the most Thank you. Go out there. It's going to be even louder than it is in here. I got to kind of talk a little bit because I don't want to. I'm good with that. I don't okay. want to either. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. All right. So I'll try to make it quick. So tell me. Uh, all right, why are you killing the texting and driving bill on the Appropriations Committee? Well, let me say, first of all, Matt, uh, you communicated with me personally, and I appreciate um, the uh, concern you have about this issue. I'm sorry that you had this incident occur where you got injured. Mm -hmm. And let me first say that distracted driving, driving while you're texting, is dangerous. It can even be deadly. And every Floridian should take personal responsibility and not do so. As a matter of fact, as parents, there's apps that are available that can disable your child's phone uh, so that when they're driving, they will not be able to even access their telephone. This bill, I, I throughout my legislative career, have fought uh, to protect individual rights against unnecessary government intrusion. It's kind of a bedrock of the Constitution that has been something I've always fought for, it, not just in this issue, but in other issues. And my fundamental issue with the way that this is being approached in the bill is the idea that when you have a cell phone and you happen to glance down to see where you're going, see what number is calling you, that act alone causes, gives the police officer ability to pull you over. That's what would happen if this becomes a primary offense. And that, to me, is an unnecessary government intrusion. And if you were to try as a citizen to say, Officer, you know, I was just looking down. I wasn't texting. I wasn't doing any of these things. I wasn't looking in my directions. And at that point, you're in a position of having to hand an officer your cell phone and show them what you've been doing, how you've been doing it. And I think that's an unnecessary intrusion. It's a heartfelt feeling on my part. It doesn't mean that I condone dangerous driving. It doesn't mean that I condone texting and driving. It doesn't mean that I condone, um, uh, you know, distracted driving, whether it be any other kinds of distractions, putting on your makeup, anything like that. That is wrong. Floridians should not do that. And when you do that, and you swerve, if you do that, and you um, break any traffic law, you make yourself eligible to be pulled over, and you should be, um, for, for breaking the laws of the land. So that's my objection, Matt, to, uh, to the bill, and it's heartfelt. It's not because I'm trying to do any deals with anybody. I'm not playing politics at all. It's just a heartfelt, and I took an oath to uphold the Constitution including the Constitution is the Fourth Amendment, right against unreasonable government interference, searches and seizures, when you're off doing your thing in the world as individuals. It's the thing that makes us different in America than these other countries in the world that we don't, that we uh, got away from. But, but in the House bill, they specifically say police officers cannot search your phone. No, and it doesn't even... say that. What it says in the House bill and in the Senate bill is it says, Police officers can tell you that you have a right to keep them from searching your phone. The problem is, at that point, you've already been pulled over. They've already, you've done nothing wrong, nothing that violates the law. You've done what I described. You just glance down. And now you have government intrusion into your life. And you, in order to defend yourself, the only way you can defend yourself is have the police officer go through your cell phone. Now, 
So I would disagree that that's what the House bill or what the Senate bill does. Uh, I think the practical effect is what I described. But here's the thing. I'm open to having discussions next session about ways that we can um, deal with distracted driving. But this, I just, I just have a strong feelings. There are people who would say that you know I'm being obstructionist. There's others who would, there's others who would say that I'm doing my, you know, defending uh, the Constitution and living up to the oath that I took when I got elected. But, but is it is it democratic right. to be at the head of a committee? Right. A lot of people in Florida didn't vote for you, right. don't know you, who you are outside of your district, and you're stopping legislation that could impact the entire state. That's not very democratic. Yeah. And I think that's a fair question, Matt, um, to, to, because a lot of folks who haven't, um, you know, I will tell you, when I was elected uh, to the legislature, you know, my on first glance or first blush would be like, how does the system work? You learn when you get elected how, how um, you know, a bill becomes a law and how it moves through committees. And I will tell you that we aren't, we're a representative democracy. We're not a pure democracy. And since our country was founded over 200 years ago, our Congress, our 50 states and our legislatures all have developed this system whereby you have committees, you have chairman of committees, and this is how this is how the process works. I, I have a duty, I have a duty as a chairman of a committee to review every piece of legislation that comes in front of me. I was put as chairman of this committee because I have certain values and bedrock principles that I have that I but uphold. It's the appropriations committee and everything you described has nothing to do with appropriations. Well the appropriations committee in the uh, Senate in the Florida Senate handles a wide variety of legislation. It is the last stop along with the Rules Committee, which is where we're sitting today, for every basically every piece of legislation. And so that is how our system is set up. And that's not unusual. If you go to other state legislatures, it's, it's not just bills that have direct huge physical impacts, but bills that have direct impact on the people of the state of Florida, even if there's not necessarily physical tag to it. So this is not an unusual thing for a bill like this to go through the Appropriations Committee. That's fairly common in our, I understand the confusion, I, I really do, but I'm saying it's a fairly common path for a bill to take okay. in the Florida Senate. Well, why not just let your colleagues on your committee vote on it? Well, because I have certain bedrock principles, matters of conscience, that when I took an oath of office and I said these things are important to me, these are things I'm going to fight for and defend. And we have to balance those, okay, with, um, you know, other concerns. But and if you're not in the, the day, majority, uh -huh, yeah. you're supposed to be for the will of the people. If well, you're not speaking for the will of the people, the thing about uh, our representative system, democracy and system of government, we have this Bill of Rights, and the reason why you have this Bill of Rights included in it is the Fourth Amendment, all right, is because if our founding fathers understood that there will be pieces of legislation that come along, and that legislation may, if you polled it, is at 70%. Or something like that. There are people, or, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and and I don't and I and I don't discount that. I've met with victims. This is our first time mm -hmm. meeting face to face, and I and I take their. I'm not discounting their pain or their concern, but the fact of the matter is, is our system is set up so that the majority doesn't. We don't. We don't just do a poll and decide how we're going to handle legislative matters or vote. We look at the text of the Constitution, we take an oath to uphold the Constitution, and if I consider that something is not consistent with the values that I hold dear, in our constitutional, not that I hold dear, our country holds dear, I, I, I believe it is my responsibility to, um, to follow what I see the Constitution guiding me to do, the principles that are contained therein. I understand how that was frustrating for some folks. I don't deny that. I'll sit and listen, uh, you know, and everyone has a right to be frustrated with the decision. I, I, I accept that. 
I'm following my conscience, and that's all I can tell you. Okay, I just have one more question. Sure. I'm gonna let you go. I really need to get to the committee. Okay, yes. and it was one last one. Because the committee's literally oh, happening right now, happening. and I want to hear the. Okay. But I, I want to, I want, I want to talk to you because this is important. Okay. Uh, yeah. And so your viewers. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In Texas, they were refusing to make it a primary legislation. Okay. A guy was texting and driving in his truck. He swerves. He hits a church van filled with 13 people. Okay. The very next legislative session to make it a primary. Right. But why are we? as lawmakers being retroactive after something terrible happens instead of proactive before it happens? I will tell you that um, we should always consider what is happening in the world. As I told you before, I think distracted driving, driving while texting, is a problem. I think that I, you know, I have kids, I have teenagers, and we talk about these types of matters and the fact that it is unacceptable uh, to while you're behind the wheel of the car, you need to be explaining, I mean, you need to be looking forward and you need to not be distracted, whether it be with your phone or with other things, talking to your kids, getting something out of your school backpack, whatever it may be. And people need to take personal responsibility to do that. Um, but at the end of the day, but I mean, we have we to wait for job, something our terrible job, to happen. Our job as the government, all right, is to make sure. Uh, my job as an elected official who, could, who has an uh, impact on government interactions with the people is to make sure that that delicate balance is preserved. That's just where I am, Matt. Mm -hmm. um, and you're not changing. Uh, I, with, oh, the bill that's in front of me, the bill, yeah, the bill that is in front of me, that's just how I feel about it. Okay. All right. Thank you for talking. Absolutely. Have a good day, Matt. You too. And I, uh, everything's, I, I understand. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.